Hey guys, this is Odron Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another solo comp or solo champion that I have found that can do stage 10 hard, right, of the Dragon's Lair, just completely solo on his own with some food champions, right? So honestly, this was something that somebody suggested in my comments. I said, you know what, let me give it a try. And uh, the champion that I'm actually talking about is going to be Corvus the Corruptor, right? He's another one of those really good ones that has the perfect hit kit for doing dragon, for soloing it and whatnot. And let's read the kit and let's see why. So first one on the A1, he has a 60% chance of placing a decrease attack on the A1, right? When it's fully scaled up. This one can help, you know, it can be really good. If you do land a decrease attack, it does help with your survivability. Then on the A2, he attacks all enemies two times. The first hit increases the duration of all enemy debuffs by one turn, which is perfect. You want those poisons to be there on more. And the second hit increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. So if you would have some other buffs, this can help. But for the sake of this solo comp, it's just the part where he extends the duration of all debuffs, right? This one's on a three turn cooldown, so it's really powerful. Also, on the on the A3, which is like, you know, the creme de la creme, the perfect uh, one for his kit is he attacks all enemies two times. Each hit has a 100% chance after you book it of placing two poison debuffs for two turns. After attacking, places a 25% poison sensitivity debuff on enemies under two or more poison debuffs, right? And then he basically, uh, with this one, he should be placing four poisons and a poison sensitivity, which makes him the perfect poisoner for the sake of the waves and obviously for the sake of the dragon itself. Then on the passive, decreases the damage enemies under poison debuffs inflict by 5%, uh, inflict 5% less damage per poison debuff Attacks up to 25%. So let's say, for example, you only place four of them, right? With with the A3, you pretty much bring 20% damage mitigation. That's that's amazing. That's perfect. If you combine that with the chance to land a decrease attack, he's just the ideal one for this. Then also on the passive, increases ally defense in all battles by 30%. So because he has this uh, perfect uh, aura, you're going to be using his aura, which gives you more defense. He has the perfect damage mitigation for himself on the passive. And then he the, can land those decrease attacks on the, the you know, single targets. It's not as uh, good as Nishax one, where he does AoE. But the fact that he's defense-based, he has higher base HP, higher base defense. So it is a little bit easier to build him, to make him work. Now, I do want to mention this, right? What I'm going to show you... It doesn't work perfectly on uh, or it's not reliable enough on stage 10, okay? Because I'm missing something extremely important and that is an awakening. So it kind of hurts my soul. I pulled everything, right? On the test server, everything that I had, I just straight up sold most of my souls. I tried to pull all of the the soul stones, right? To try and get at least a one star, right? I wanted at least a one star to have for him, which would make, from my point of view, this run to be you know, 99.99% more successful, right? It would be a lot easier, it would be a lot more reliable because again, having that one star awakening at least would help you because you can bring that emergency heal awakening, which I showed yesterday, yesterday on Nishak, which would bring him that extra heal that he needs, especially when we get to the boss part. Plus it would be, bring some extra damage mitigation, right? So that's, uh, that's why it's not perfect. Like, you know what, this one might work, but I want to mention from the beginning, it's not reliable enough without the awakening however without the awakening i took it to stage nine and easily did it right no worries at all he easily did stage nine that that one i could guarantee that on stage nine it's a hundred percent reliable right it's just on stage 10 the speed of the boss and also because of you know maybe not having enough survivability to self-sustain sometimes can make it be a little bit tricky also the fact that, you know, the thing that can make it, make it be a little bit tricky is also the fact that he does have this uh, these uh, poisons on a fortune cooldown. You see, it wasn't reliable enough. We didn't heal back up uh, fast enough, which means it doesn't work as uh, as well. However, if we take it on stage nine, you're gonna see that this one is just 100% successful. It should not fail. Now, the reason why I say that that awakening is so important, like I said, a minimum of uh, one star, but obviously the higher awakening you have, the better, is because first of all, like I said, that awakening, you would choose emergency heal. You would combine that with a blood shield accessory, which I have on him, and that would provide them every time a shield is broken, 
not expires, that would provide him with a massive, uh, you know, with a pretty good chunk of heal. That's like what, uh, I think it's 3% heal on one star, 6% a higher one. So that would bring, bring him that extra, you know, uh, healing, that extra survivability. Not only that, but for every level of awakening that you have, you take less damage and do more damage against bosses, right? I'm gonna show you once we get to the boss part on stage nine that the the passive that, that I'm uh, that I'm talking about. I think it's called awakening weakness, right? Something like that. And uh, that that's why you know awakenings are so important in the game. I'm not gonna lie. Once you get into the end game, and you know this is more of an end game showcase because it requires some pretty tough stats, at least for stage ten. For stage 9, you see we're perfectly fine, you could drop the stats I'm going to show you maybe by a lot and you should still be fine and it's still stage 9, you're one stage away from the highest level and it works pretty fast as well, right? I noticed when it was successful on stage 10, I did it 1 minute and 25. So this is the, the one that I'm talking about here, decreases damage inflicted by bosses for each awakening level, also increases the damage, right? So this is what, that's what makes it so much easier. But look at this, this one just looks so much better, right? When you're on or, uh, when you're on stage 9, because obviously you cannot get crit, you, the boss is a little bit slower as well. Also, you can see that the, the stun doesn't keep landing. I'm going to show you why, because it's, uh, you know, this team, this uh, solo comp is going to be the same way that the Nishak one was. And it's a perfect combination of the mastery, the perfect combination of the gear sets and all of that. Plus, I'm going to show you some ideas of how you can improve this. But you can see... Again, pretty easy, it was on stage 9, like I said, it was perfectly easy, perfectly reliable. Stage 9 is easy without awakening, stage 10 maybe not so much. The one quirky thing though is I, I'm personally choosing to use a uh, preset because otherwise he chooses to go with the A2 first, right? With the extension of debuffs and buffs, which doesn't really help you because there's nothing out there. So I choose to go with the preset and start, you know, always prioritize the poisons and then the A2, but I'm quite sure it might work even without the preset to just have to find, you know, just run it a few times and see how it goes. But when we're talking about the build, it's pretty much the same thing that I showed yesterday on Nishak, and that's going to be a regeneration set plus perception. I didn't put a blood shield on him this time around because like I mentioned, well, I have no, uh, I don't have an awakening. So there was no point for me to put a blood shield accessory. But when it comes to the stats, he's running at 258 speed, 81 KHP, 4.4 care defense, 480 resist, 362 uh, accuracy, right? What you need again for stage 10 in order to resist the debuffs, in order to land your uh, debuffs consistently on the boss part, you're looking to get 450 resist and 345 accuracy. When it comes to the speed, I would say roughly around 250, 251, just to make sure you go before the boss. But you know what? I would say just around 250 should be fine. Obviously, if you can get higher with good survivability, you want at least 4K defense at at least 75,000 HP just to make sure that you're tanky enough, okay? And then you're gonna see I have some awakening. Obviously, this is an end, again, this is an end game showcase, right? You're gonna see all the gear is uh, ascended, is fully ascended, trying to get as many survivability stats as I can. I didn't ascend these two because I didn't get the chance to uh, farm more, more uh, of the Shogun, right? But ideally, this one ascended to resist to the max would give me a ton more resist, which means I could take the resist away from other places, maybe something like this, and get more HP, more defense percent, more speed, more of the other stats, right? Now, when it comes to the, like I said, to the Awakening, if you, if you do get the Blessing, I would 100% advise you going with Emergency Heal, get a Blood Shield Accessory, Ring, Amulet, whichever you have that's, you know, Best for you, I would say that the easiest one would be going for a, a ring one because first of all, there's high chances you have a ring. Secondly, there's a high, there's a lower chance that you get the right stats on your amulets on a blood shield accessory, whereas a random uh, amulet you can just keep, you know, rolling several of them up until you get good enough resist and accuracy. So the reason why I keep saying the emergency heal is because basically it says like this: heal this champion whenever a shield buff placed on them expires, is removed, or is broken by an enemy attack. The value of the heal is equal to proportion to a portion of this champion's max HP. So even at one star, this is three percent max HP heal. This is the equivalent of having an immortal set on you, and every time you get a turn after you hit, the shield goes off, you get healed. If you get hit, and you have a shield that goes off, you get healed, right? So if you have a three star, uh, three star awakening, it's six percent. If you have a five star nine, and obviously if you have six, that's fifteen. That's basically the equivalent of having another uh, regeneration set on you. 
Also, the higher awakenings, obviously, the more extra stats you're gonna get. Like, if you have just a one star, you're gonna get what's that, 7500 HP. That would be a really good chunk. So, I'm missing out on a lot by not having that. Now, when it comes to the masteries, pretty consistent, same thing as yesterday. But you wanna go with pinpoint accuracy. I chose to go with Exalt, exalt and Death because as the first one dies on the first wave, you get a big heal. Second one, same thing, second wave. Somebody dies, you get the big heal. This is really helpful. Also, Arcane Celerity is a must because you're going to be putting a lot of debuffs. Every time they expire, you have a chance to get a good chunk of Turnitur. Then a lot of steel can help, but it's not mandatory. Then a uh, cycle of magic could help, but I feel like maybe cycle of magic is actually bad because if it procs at the wrong time, you go out of order and then you do the A2 before you already put the poison out, uh, poisons out, right? Before you do the A3 and place those poisons and you're kind of wasting it. So maybe don't take cycle of, of magic, just take, I don't know, e evil eye, okay? Then over here, Master Hexer, 100% Spirit Haste, so you get extra speed. And then Tier 6, Oppressor. Again, Oppressor is kind of like the best one for soloing uh, for soloing teams, right? When people pull out the debuffs out there, you're going to get a bigger Terminator uh, fill rate, which is going to help you a ton. And then you would go Defense Tree. This one's really important, improve parry. So you take less damage when you hit with a crit. This one is better for this specific case, from my point of view, than Blast Proof, because Blast Proof only works for AoEs, where this one works for any hit, and most of the time, you're gonna have a problem when you get hit with a crit. So improve pad is gonna be better. Obviously go Rejuvenation, Resurgent. Resurgent is so important and this one can be so good when you get to the boss part, right? When the boss does that inhale and then it hits you if you don't take the, the purple bar down and it keeps doing more and more damage. I think it does like 10% uh, and 25, 50, 75 and then 100% of your HP. So basically this one gives you a chance to just remove that stun when the boss does it and you straight up get a turn. Otherwise, you're kind of losing a turn and it can be a little bit tricky. So resurgence like, you know, top tier one for a choice. Delay death, obviously, so you get more uh, survivability over time. And then tier six, the tier five, I guess retribution. Again, if you do lose over 25%, you have a chance to counterattack. And basically counterattacking, you have a chance to land a decrease attack, right? So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. One other tip that I could suggest, if you can hit the stats that I told you, one other thing that could be helpful, instead of this perception set, you can try and go with retaliation, right? Because every time you retaliate, if you do have the awakening and the emergency heal, you basically put that shield back up, even if it's not your turn yet, you get hit, you heal up again. You counterattack, you get hit, you heal up again. You, you get the gist, right? So if you can get regen plus one retaliation, and also if you can get revenge accessories, which I've been slacking on, I need to start buying more uh, regen, uh, revenge accessories, right? I, I don't think I even have any, I have this one, right? But these ones again can help because 5% chance to counterattack when hit. So it, the ideal one would be to have two revenge accessories, one blood shield accessory, a regen, and then a retaliation set. And that should be, you know what? If you had at least one Star Awakening, if not maybe three, at three Star Awakening, I could say that you should be a hundred or 99.99% successful on soloing uh, Dragon on stage 10 hard. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I really wanted to show this because like I said, somebody mentioned in my comments about Corvus. I forgot about him. He has an amazing kit for this one. And I said, you know what, let me test it out. It works beautifully. And definitely if you have a Corvus, Consider building him, right? It's pretty fast, as you noticed. It helps you level up food at the same time. And uh, he's just an amazing poisoner and debuff extender at the same time. And definitely, you will not be regretting investing into him. But anyway, we're going to leave it at this for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like it. Subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next. And I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.